Okay, who who hit us with a truck? Why are we alive? Why am I not dead? I want to be dead right now. I can't feel the lower half of my body. Why is yeah. the walls off white? Wait, why does this children book say Baron Stain? Anyway, I'm Adam, and it looks like we're trapped in this room until we go through homebrew hell. Again. Oh, sh- oh shit. I'm well, Alabash of the well, Unicorn, and I sure as hell hope that uh, we can solve the mysteries of this current issue. Otherwise, otherwise, it is going to be a true hell. Uh, how you doing, y'all? It's, it's your pal Biggie Nigo. Um, I um, I'm here, and we're gonna be talking about um, wheelchairs. I think I'm an expert in one because I pretend to be a crippled in real in real life to my friends to make them think <laughs> I'm cool. <laughs> I'm a dioxid, and uh, I sometimes I wish that I could put Biggie in a wheelchair. <laughs> oh, why are you bullying me? I am Mrs. Diopsid, and well, like I, I have no words for this. I have really nothing to say except, um, this isn't a wheelchair. This is a back. <laughs> and I'm Randall Frank, and I'm back. For the first time in what seems like an eternity. Yeah, how'd you get here into this alternate dimension? Oh, see, I was copulating with the necrotic foes of Shub Nagirath when some sort of dimensional space time wibbly wobbly thing pulled me in here. Oh, no. Okay, I'm just, right to, this... I'm just going to ask our, this new person who's been here the entire time um, what's your name and why are you here? I'm Master Disaster, and I'm here as my court-mandated community service to help special needs people. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, kind sir. Well, with that in mind, let's uh, let's commit our let's continue our community service by reading about the combat wheelchair. So, the combat wheelchair was a concept devised by a person with with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which can run the gamut. Uh, it can range from you're actually mostly fine and can walk around to you're wheelchair bound because your joints just keep popping out of alignment. Yeah. Oh, we need to describe gross. too. Like, I mean, there could be some people without context here. We, we should probably describe what's going on with uh, wheelchairs right now in D and D. Oh yeah, now that you can do all sorts of things, but uh, we're going to have to read through it to learn more about this. So the combat wheelchair. Made with the adventure in mind, the combat wheelchair is supportive and intuitive, designed for both daily activity and the pressures of combat during one's adventures. What the fuck is a Cyberpunk 2020? It, it feels <laughs> like a Cyberpunk uh, storebook, yeah. Like it's trying to sell it to me. It could be specifically tailored to its users with a variety of intuitive upgrades designed and created by first-rate artificiers and their disabled consultants <laughs> to ensure high-grade <laughs> comfort and excellent efficiency. <laughs> uh, who knew the medieval times that they get high medieval uh, fantasy that they cared so much about the, di- the needs of the disabled? How progressive. I-, I just like how they have disabled consultants. Did they just are are those the people that came up with the brilliant idea of making the Mortal Engines movie? <laughs> should we like um sh- should we tell our audience what's going on with all this wheelchair fe- um um fetishism going on in D and D right now? Because there has been a fuckload of awkward artwork depicting fucking uh, weirdos in like wheelchairs when they should not be adventuring in the first place. Yeah, it's kind of weird that recently. There's been this push to try to make it so that anyone can be an adventurer when sometimes, no, you, you just can't. I mean, technically anybody can be a, an adventurer, but they just won't survive all that long. Well, yeah. We should have put our foots down when they wanted minorities to become adventurers. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Hey, hey, man, orc lives matter. Oh. <laughs> so, where was Not- it? Not, I'll, I'll pick this up. Not only this, 
the wheelchair provides its the wheelchair itself so the wheelchair is self aware being sleek, fashionable, and durable at a price affordable for the discerning mobility user. This is like an advertisement. What the hell? Taking its design from the chair used in sports such as wheelchair basketball and rugby, you mean comedy sports. The combat wheelchair can withstand high impact and even work as a weapon itself, <laughs> provide the user with the means of both defense and attack. Anyone can be an adventure. This is it's it's this is this is a Cyberpunk 2020 advertisement right here. So if you're a little holder where you can keep your potions so they don't spill. <laughs> oh my god, it's good. I just do want to say that apparently wheelchair basketball and wheelchair rugby are real things. Oh, yeah, they actually get rough oh, as yeah. fuck. They get oh, yeah. rough as hell in those games. Like, wow. Jesus Christ, it's like these guys are <laughs> aggressive. They just channel their inner berserker and try to go to Valhalla. It's it's great. <laughs> what what does the com what does this chair do? The combat may the combat wheelchair may look like it comes with a lot of features. What is fe features? Yeah, and some uh, some of the some of you may feel that because it's this is unfair for a character to have this at first level. No fucking shit. It's How like the stuff that this will do is quite a bit um we'll get into it but there's a lot of features this thing has and stuff you can add to it it's kind of ridiculous interjection real, interjection real quick i've read through this entire thing and out of all the features this thing has i have not seen toilet offer as one of them oh god <laughs> oh shit so i can only imagine well, the group right I can only imagine the group running around together, and the berserker has to stop at some point to carry him over to a place to clean themselves up, and then do, continue do, the quest afterwards. Do you, do you like have a piss jug on the side of it, or do you, like if you get especially uh, scared, you just just no, they, they, they just have a they just have a colostomy bag that they just kind of is that a ranged attack? Yeah, you just chop <laughs> the colostomy bag. Can we not, please? <laughs> colostomy bag, one d three damage, DC twelve to not be sickened. I hate you. Water can flow up or down the stairs. Is it down on fear? No, unless you're planning on making all the able body characters of uh, level one also remain on ground floors and never go up downstairs in the dungeons. If you were planning to do that, then that's fair. So wait, this, that, I, I got what? my legs. I can walk. But wait, what? Do, do you mean that I sound ridiculous? Hmm. Well, that's yeah, so weird. Uh, okay, so if I put a person like. Let's say you're going down up five flights of stairs and you can't use your legs. You could crawl up there eventually, maybe, but probably not. Probably. So, not. also, what's preventing other people from getting on the wheelchair and floating up to you know to say fuck fuck walking? We're just gonna uh, get a we're gonna hop a peg and just get a ride. Yeah, that's a world where this got heavily popularized and everyone turns into like the humans from Wall-E. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's what I was thinking. Like you can exactly. like, like, all the adventures like have like these like wheelchairs that they like fight in and like so they're like rocks. You just got a warlock just lazily leaning back in his chair, just flicking his hand up as fireballs fly out of him. No, it does, no, that's too much effort. He actually has the chair do it for him. All right, let's <laughs> All right, we, we need to stop the speculations. Uh, we need to continue reading this. We need um, to know more about wheelchair I did combat. Just, I did just want to interject one here. It ha This chair only has so many features because it is designed to enable a disabled party member to do exactly what the able members of the party can do. But so make it so they don't have a disability. But that's the whole point of having a disability is that there's stuff you can't do. That like I mean, no matter what you can do, like let's say let's say you started life as a rogue and after a particularly stupid decision on your part, your fingers and, and hands were broken apart by the local mafia. You're probably not going to be able to pick locks too well anymore after that. But not with your combat wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> the combat wheelchair also includes robotic arms that allow you to pick locks <laughs> as if you still had I was actually, actually like the adventure in Cheryl's being completely automated. This replace it with magically animated combat wheelchairs. Oh, no. Right all the time. I was thinking like, <laughs> I was thinking like a Jetson scenario where just pushing a button is hard. 
I just imagine you're like you're trying to stealth on somebody and your your wheel just eat, eat, eat. <laughs> Okay. Let's right, continue well, on. Let's continue so, on. Yeah. But it can be used yeah. as a weapon. Isn't that unfair? No, unless you plan on taking away every player's weapon. If you were planning on doing it, then that's fair. But wh what do you mean that sounds silly? Bec I like how they're trying to be cute about trying to deny that what they're saying is insane. Because the thing is, they have a weapon. You technically have two weapons. Oh, also, if you're disabled from the waist down, you could still fire a crossbow. You could still slash at somebody directly in front of you. Yeah, sure, yeah, you're gonna you bitch to get up to them and do it. One of the or ideas, one of the hypotheses. It's not really popular, but um, there was the semi, you know, the semi-legendary Ivar the Boneless was that he was partially disabled because he had like brittle bone disease or something. And only... instead of actually being a fighter, he would serve as a bowman because that way it prevent himself from getting fucked up too much. I heard his disability was his incontinence. That's what I heard his disability was. Like, yeah, the other idea is that he was infertile. And that's just where he got the name. The only time a wheelchair should be used for a, a weapon is when you're running over a goblin's fucking head. I mean, I mean, there was a king of Hungary that was completely blind and just had his squires aim him when he did jousting in Lansing. That's... He did die eventually in battle, but he, he was a fairly successful general before then. That's pretty cool. But this wheelchair has equipment that comes with it. Yes, in the same way a sword comes with a sheath and belt, a Dungeoneer's pack comes with... That's not... I mean... Yeah, yeah, but these a are just can store more because it's like a wagon too, if you think about it. But wheelchair, no, no, wheelchairs have never been in dungeons. This, what? We nobody said that. Nobody's ever said that. Oh, also, maybe. it's telling he has to use Ari Salvatore's Drizzt so stories to get there, which is like Dragon Lance. Which wheelchair and the dwarf that's in the wheelchair doesn't fight because he's disabled. But no, it's canon to D and D. All oh. settings, not just Forgotten Realms. Yeah, Faerun. I, I got Dragon. I got Dragonlands and Faerun confused. Why would anyone need a wheelchair? This world has magic. Yeah. Again, we recommend you read Salvatore. <laughs> <Drizzle novel. laughs> yeah, and I raised that with Greater Restoration, which is like what a level six or seven uh, cleric spell. Additionally, healing spells like Restoration and Regeneration are very costly. And what about those of us simply born with our disabilities? You can still, you can there. still, you can like, still you know, it. You can Remember, still everybody, it. if you have a disability, that means God hates you and you should feel bad. <laughs> God damn it. I want to be the monster here real quick when I just state that the idea of D&D &D is to create a fantasy character. When does a disabled person create a fantasy character that doesn't have their disability? No, yeah, no, because, because that's creative. Your, no, that's creative. Like I was disability. born blind, so here's my elven archer, Blindo. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> some of us we, look, look, look at this as telling. Some of us, we don't want to be fixed. No, you just want to bitch incessantly about. Yeah, about I'd like your the creation. fact, and like I just don't like people that like don't want that don't want to like if they're per presented with like uh with like an accessible cure they refuse it and still continue to mooch off of like you know disability benefits and other stuff like what, like steve jobs oh <laughs> damn shit oh, wow we're getting some hot fire today <laughs> yeah like, like like you're like the fact like you you just like you're, you're if you have like a cure and you don't take it like you're you're kind of being a bit selfish well, there's also the matter that, well, what was I, I had a point where it was along the lines of, if you're going to try to roleplay a person with that disability, trying to counter every single element of that not only makes it pointless, but you're refusing the reality of the situation. Yeah. Which could be, a, which could be an, an, that scenario in of itself could be interesting where the disabled character is not coming to terms with their like, with their let's disability. say, for example, I do a paladin build that's based on that Hungarian blind king. He wants to go off on the adventures to make sure to fulfill the legacy that he wants to set for himself. But because of an early injury when he was training, he was blinded. But rather than accept reality, he tries to get around it by having people assist him in aiming. But he's still at risk for being caught blindsided. He's still at risk for getting 
completely sucker punched because he can't see. He only has his hearing in those types of situations. And he's not very accurate. Like you can do a character like that, and it could be a very, a very fascinating character, but I don't think that's what she wants. Uh, or a it's... wizard who, as a child, suffered from tuberculosis, nearly killing him. You, you set up kind of like that one sickly wizard from Dragonlance, where they're basically they they basically have to have the equivalent of a magical oxygen tank or something. But this chair was never created to make a disabled character better than an bullshit, body bullshit, character. bullshit, bullshit. Oh, bullshit. It was, exactly. made, it was made to enable characters with disabilities to go adventuring the same as an able-bodied character. Just with two different types of weapons you can use on it. Because not only can you <laughs> shoot them with a bow, you can run them over and do damage that way. If Apparently you take... the, the Tomb of Horrors is wheelchair accessible now. <laughs> oh, oh, no, the Tomb of Horrors is equal opportunity murder. Because remember, the first 30 seconds you just stop existing if you don't figure out the puzzle in time. One, it doesn't like. Isn't there other options where it also sends you into the dungeon? Uh, yeah, really far, like, and you have no idea where you are. There, one of my favorites is there's one near the very end, which just sends you right back to the beginning and resets everything. <laughs> and and remember, going to the beginning, going through the portals is a crapshoot. You don't know which one you're going to be getting. And there's one that portals you right above, like right above a sphere of annihilation, so you just stop existing as you fall. Actually, the Sphere of uh, Annihilation is hidden within a uh, very conspicuous uh, stick mouth that makes it look like you're supposed to look for like a switch or something there. <laughs> if you take issue with, with disabled people celebrating and having fun with a game that they love, then you need to reconsider your stance on disability. Disability is nothing to be ashamed about. Remember, Except in God this... hates you. <laughs> <laughs> well, in this case, uh, it's very clear that she is ashamed of it, given she Yeah, she it. is ashamed of it, because, like, if she wasn't ashamed of it, she would, like, you know, make it, like, something, like, that, like, she would actually, like, come to terms with the fact that she, she can't do, like, everything. And like, she if had you want others. a wondrous item like this, sure, that costs money, but you could set something up like that. Yeah, but that's a very expensive, or that's an artificier, or a crippled making, artificier. Yeah, but making it a level one accessible, that's a little bit delusional. There's so many other solutions you could do, like maybe use your animal companion, or heck, just get the, you know, the big barbarian to carry you. Yeah, like a master on your back, blaster. like Master Blaster. Exactly. Yeah. Like master yeah. master. Or alternatively, if you're small enough, or what about... Or what about like if you're a halfling, you use a dog, you use a uh, you use a uh, a large dog like a as your riding companion, and that's how you. I, th I thought you were going for like uh, the little baby strap that where you're on the person's back and they just turn around and you just start using your wizard, you know, jazz hands to do wizard spells. Oh my god! <laughs> like yes. a little baby hamper. <laughs> yeah, imagine being a barbarian. You got like a gnome on your and back. A baby and Bjorn. Like, oh, He's in a baby <laughs> Bjorn. <laughs> Perfect. I got this next one. I'll do it. Proficiencies. The combat wheelchair is designed to be easy to maintain, upgrade, and repair. Its simplicity is a necessity as an adventurer may not always be able to find a smith, artificer, or any such tinker to pit stop at. As a result, you now have proficiency in tinkered's tools. Oh, yes, We're the, the three-int barbarian would know not to eat the fucking <laughs> wrench. <laughs> the, the, you know how many fucking, do you know how many fucking moving parts there are in a, a, a fucking wheelchair? At least two. Quite a bit. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is it's not easy, all right? It's Wait, easy. do you count the person sitting in it? <laughs> oh, no. Jesus Christ, we're going to hell. Oh, we're already we're the there. Bar we're in the Berenstain universe. We're already there. <laughs> no, no, this is a non -con This is a universe with no consequences, so we can do all we want. Portability. One of the best-selling features of this item is the ease of portability. You can take it anywhere on your adventures, except up a except up a ninety-degree incline. This is due to the collapse. This is due to the, its collapsible design, which enables its user to pack it up, pull it out on, whilst on the go. Fold it up. The wheelchair fits neatly onto the back of any cart, and you can even attach to the saddlebags. Oh my god, you can get a sidecar with- you can use it like a fucking sidecar with a mount. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. 
<laughs> I'm just envisioning like a paladin on one side and you got the injured battle brother on the other who still wants to fight on the other in the wheelchair just in a sidecar with another lance. Oh my god, if you if you're trying to carry the combat wheelchair by yourself once it's been folded, remember it could be Wait, quite how? a shout. How if you're by yourself you can't walk? Do you just strap it on your back and crawl? <laughs> This is As, another case of, oh, no, no, you, you still need help in this. I like that it's collapsible, but it's supposed to be heavy as shit. It's neatly, it's supposed to be portability, but if it's heavy as fuck, then that's... As this wheelchair does not rely on a motor, but a mix of manual and small, ma small magically imbued uh, beacon stones. Bullshit, that's, a, that's an engine in of itself. It is more lightweight than other wheelchairs available. Oh, uh, only weighing 25 pounds. That's uh, a lot of kit just for that. Yeah, that's a... Pounds is pain. To follow the uh, the adage in the military, pounds is pain. And especially if you want to make sure that your character's not uh, over their light or medium carry weight as well. Also noticed that carrying capacity, I think, is multiplied by a higher level because it's just on the chair and you're using rotation. So, you're not better, but you just can carry more than everyone else. You know, if you if you wanted something that probably weighed a lot less to carry a vegetable around, you could just get a wheelbarrow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. God, God damn. <laughs> Versatile. The combat wheelchair lends itself to both strength and dex. How are you dexterous in a fucking wheelchair? It looks like yeah. it's just going to be brute force. Maybe it's yeah. like those wheelchair bikes, you know, the ones that you just kind of lean in, uh, like for the rallies. Oh my god. Ugh. No, you're like, just, you're uh, doing sick flips on the uh, half pipe with your wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> Is it bad? I'm just now envisioning, like, people doing parkour and just the question. Kind of rogue who's, Look. like, doing a weird... <laughs> Fucking kick flip. Uh, the question is: the question is, can you peel out? And if you do enough dexterity moves, can you peel out in the wheelchair? Can Tokyo you burn some rope? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> the frame of the wheelchair. The wheels are made from lightweight but durable materials. So to be, like I said, this is Cyberpunk 2020. This is this is some sh shammy company going to sell me a crummy product. Like like they're trying to make you think it's mithril, but in reality it's just it's just some cheap ass aluminum. Just ass. <laughs> <laughs> so an extension of the self. Spells. When casting spells with magical effects, the combat wheelchair is considered as being a part of you. An extension of your body. <laughs> The what? The, the, the body that is half broken. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I was just envisioning since it's just inorganic. Uh, like I guess it's kind of like how swords and, and weapon armor can also be applied. Yeah. As a result, both you and the chair share the benefit of the spell's effect for the duration, or until the spell's dropped. Wild shaping and transmutation. Oh, I'm just now envisioning a wild shaper going into bear form, but in a wheelchair. But wait, does that mean you're like those poor... It's like you're one like of those... those dogs that have the, you know, the wheels to make up for the missing leg? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah! Oh, that just, that just oh, makes me sad. Oh, just yeah! I, I've seen them but like, the dodo. I know what you're talking about. Well, I'm not, like, being mean. I'm just saying, like, is that how that works? Does it just turn oh. into the, the, to the legs for the back pots? I mean, wouldn't it be fucking that horrible be if you were cute. into a bear and you had use of your legs? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Then why wouldn't she just learn how to cast in bear form, which you could do at least in three point five? Yeah, you. There's a because you're a bear and you're a lazy fuckwit. That's why. <laughs> so, Druid used wild shape and transmutation spells that change the user's form, like polymorph, shape change, blah blah blah. They'll find the chair shares the benefit and transforms with them to be a part of the new form. The so basically, you just get legs that work. <laughs> then why wow. not just remain in those wild foot shape just of wild be forms? Be there for like ever. <laughs> or you, alternatively, you could use your alter self spells and then just make a version of yourself that does not have cri <laughs> crippling disabilities. You're living a lot. You're living a spell lie, but at least it's better than just this fucking thing. Well, it's not a lie when you make it permanent. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's true. The aid of the chair is still in effect in this new shape. When the druid changes back, they reappear as sitting in their chair. So I like to think. 
I like to think what happens after you do... No, that's not what happens. After you do that, it, the, the chair's on you, and you're just crobbling on the ground. Pathetic well, I, I like you did, are. I just, oh, come on. We're getting, oh, we're getting yeah, that's real mean. mean. <laughs> no, like, I was thinking more like, depending on what location you were on, maybe that's where you're... Like, if you got knocked on your back, you'd be in the chair, but, like, you'd be on your back, you need, maybe need someone to get you back up. You're like a turtle. You're like well, a turtle. Well, I mean, unless you can push yourself up enough so that the wheels don't keep rolling off. So, the equipment. As already mentioned, the combat wheelchair comes with equipment. But let us address what that means. Oh, wait. If the chair comes with equipment, that's basically treating the character as if they don't exist. And it's just a, a sentient wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> why did, why did you take the it's person, the person in, the in the chair with the equipment, not the chair. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of like, kind of reminds me of how, like, back in the day, you know, instead of wheelchair user, they just would call you a wheelchair. Like, like someone was like, oh, I, I washed, I, I, I bathed, like, two wheelchairs for someone who worked in a group home, and they're like, oh, you washed the wheelchairs. It's like, no, I washed the people in the, that, that use the wheelchair. Oh, that's... <laughs> God oh, damn. That's can, we, can we please stop this, like, be, we're all gonna go to hell if we keep talking like this. We're like already in hell. We're already in we're hell, in the, Biggie. We're in the fucking Berenstain universe. We're screwed <laughs> anyway. We're at, we're we're in hell, Biggie. We're in homebrew hell. This is what it, this is. This is our punishment. Well, anyway, much in the same way, a Dungeoneer's pack comes with lots of handy little items like torches, tinder box, ropes, call drops, etc. The combat wheelchair comes with handy little items too. Many of these are actually built into the chairs, the same way that. Uh, that an explorer's pack has pouches and compartments, but only one item comes separate from the chair, the gloves, which you may choose to wear or not. Wait, does that mean you could just get carry double by just getting another equipment pouch to go with the equipment pouch on your chair? Possibly. Uh, uh, the thing that is, means though, you have two extra slots. You have an extra slot, which totally isn't unfair. I'm hoping with the gloves that it's... Did I get awesome? Can I get some dope-ass fingerless gloves to go along with this? <laughs> no, no, they're just simple leather gloves that grant you protection from friction while using the push rooms. But what if I like friction? What if I want nice friction? Yeah, rear back, rear backrest compartment. This bag, which has been designed to fit snug against the back of the chair, is attached to the seat's backrest and camber bar. Could you? I don't know what that is. It's a, it's a part of a wheelchair. It's like. Basically, it's the, it's kind of like the equivalent of an axle, almost. Okay, I didn't know. I was being genuine question. This is the same as an Explorer's pack in your starting gear, so you may wish to forego that and use the backrest compartment instead. It can hold the same items and the amount of the... Does that mean also in your lap you could hold another yeah. Explorer yeah, bag? Yeah, you can, which is another Oh, wait, my God. <laughs> We could use him as the pack, You're, instead of being you, you as the wheelchair guy or being used as the frickin' pack mule of the group. I mean, you could. You carry, like, uh, what is it, your strength score times 15 as your carrying capacity, which is more than normal. It's strange. For all the equipment, they forgot to add dignity. <laughs> oh. oh, dignity stat, you're, it instantly goes to zero, according to this book. So, even though my legs don't work, I could be adventured just like I've always wanted to. Okay, Shut up, hold the, mule. Okay, hold the hold it hold this then. And they just call him Hodor from now on. No, they just well, no no the, the asshole barbarian just tips him over just because <laughs> just tips him over, calls him a nerd. Nerd, whatever. <laughs> and you come across a jelly cube and there's just a wheelchair floating in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was thinking, like, the jelly cube needs the wheelchair. <laughs> the anatomy of a chair. What the fuck? Chair like I said, the because of the writing, they've now become sentient creatures. They're a race now. The wheelchair race. <laughs> a wheelchair race? I wonder what, what, what class would go good with the wheelchair race. No. Oh, no, I mean, they no. They do have a <laughs> I, I've got it. I've got it. Like, people started upgrading the wheelchair so much that they became sentient, and they started to wage a war to exterminate humanity. You know what's the only thing they can't do uh, as the wheelchair race? They can never rise up. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. 
the anatomy of a chair. So far, it's been mentioned that the combat wheelchair is based on the design of chairs used in high impact sports. But does this mean? What does this mean regard how the wheelchair actually looks? None of the items used to make the base of the frame give the user any significant bullshit. Just all they more, do is more item equipment slots. Oh, uh, they could float up. Uh, no, no significant benefit whatsoever. Ignoring this all is... traps, by the way, that are on stairs. Also, uh, like I said, it's just the. Also, technically, you could use the floating things to avoid all, uh, like, like all like, like uh, trap look, doors. Like, yeah, let's say I just put put like grease on the steps. Well, the float just means that you can just do whatever. Slanted wheels. These wheels allow uh, easy, act, safe passage over the over coast, forest, grassland, and mountain feet terrains. I call bullshit on the mountains. Oh. <laughs> Have fun trying to crawl up a slope with that. Oh, it's like big breaks over the road racing where you just like. <laughs> Does this mean you go faster backwards in the wheelchair? <laughs> <laughs> this is like big breaks over the road racing where you just like climb up mountains like at. <laughs> and, like, you why, why use teleport up? when we can just? Why use teleport when we can have this? When we can have our pack mule go backwards at like five times the speed of light. <laughs> <laughs> he goes so much. He goes so much that he breaks the fabric of reality. He breaks the fabric of reality. <laughs> so, uh, oh, God, I lost. I lo okay, so the slant of the wheelchairs oh, as they turn. Uh, Master, did you want to say something? I'm I'm just rolling around. If someone wants to take a break from reading, I'll read. Though I'm cool with that. Go right ahead. Sell us the the feature the. The uh, chair's the anatomy, as it were. Okay. Where left off. The slant of the wheels as they turn inwards and upwards disperse weight evenly and give you good control when traveling over these terrains. The spokes are covered by wooden covers to prevent debris getting tangled in them. That doesn't stop termites. Or, or yeah, exactly. Lice. <laughs> or water. Or, or anything rock. else. Or goblins from stealing it. Uh, there's, look, there's more pouches because you don't have enough space already about the frame of the chair are three additional small pouches near the armrest one of these serves as a water skin holder to save you from having to oh waste time oh my god it's a drink the... it's a drink it's a cup holster it's a cup <laughs> it is exactly a cup holster why do that when you get to have a beret that serves that's the same job like the, you can get smitty werb and jaegerman jensen's hat the next two are worse the other two pouches can be used to hold your weapon or weapons, much like a sword belt or shield harness. So how big is this pouch? Because it is a pouch, it's not, not a, a holster. <laughs> <It's not> a <laughs> holster. <laughs> or it can be simply used to carry a bit more gear, much like trouser pockets. Are they magical? Because you're, you're not wearing pants, obviously. Like a bag of <laughs> so you don't wear pants. <laughs> you don't wear pants while you're in the wheelchair. Pants not required. But I'm sure like, the laws of public of like decency like still apply. <laughs> laws do not apply when you're in the wheelchair of doom that allows you to go backwards at negative five speed of light <laughs> and float up oh. and float up greasy stairs. Uh. Seat tilt lever. This small lever sits just under the seat. When pressed as an action, it releases a lock mechanism. Mock <laughs> <laughs> metacosinism. Thank you, Brain. The causes a seat to tilt up so that getting in and out of the chair is easier. You know. God, you can spring so you can spring launch yourself out of the chair. I mean, you could alter some dickbag artificer could alter it to the way that you could launch the guy like he's a like human catapult. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking like uh, oh oh is this the is this the new wheelchair for our lord? Oh no, it's just the catapult. Yes, actually. Never mind, it is the wheelchair. Yes, no it now I yeah, they're, they're really proud of their beacon stones because they bring it up in adjustable armrests. These armrests are affixed to the chair and are adjustable to your arm's length. Okay, so hopefully your arms still reach a certain human level. Seat belts, I think seat belts pretty self-explanatory. The seat belts are affixed to the chair and strapped about the waist, knees, and shins. So good luck getting out of this thing in a fucking hurry. That's why you have a that's why you have a that's why you have a no, it comes with a knife that's a seatbelt cutter. <laughs> Hold on, uh, that's not gonna save you when the goblin lights you on fire in your wheelchair. This helps to hold you in the chair correctly and prevents them from falling out whenever the chair is struck, thrown, and handled roughly by a creature or spell in combat. It didn't mention, you want to get... mention companions, because I would absolutely use the person in the chair as a weapon. 
<laughs> also, also, what if you need to? You mentioned a good point. What if you just wanted to duck and duck and dive? If somebody is going to, if being in this thing is going to be a certain death. Oh, go oh, never mind. Look at this. These belts all have clasp buckles, which can be undone by using a bonus action to prevent the release buttons. How convenient! It's a it's a bonus action, meaning you can still do standard and movement. And bullshit. Well, well, by movement, you mean fall out of the chair. <laughs> well, if you're, like grappled, you can we can immediately be released by just like you know releasing the seat belt. But remember, you're it's not fair unless it has all of these. <laughs> like it's not fair. Like a rogue or a ranger, they dodge, you know, meticulously, or you know, a barbarian just steps out of the way. But no, you gotta fall out of your fucking chair. To okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, we have to get to. I'm gonna get to the last portion. That's the most bullshit of this. The beacon oh, yeah, stone. Beacon so. These stones are common, factory made. What? Factory by artifice. By art- high middle ages. By artificers across the realms for this it's sole like purpose. It's like the Venetian arsenal, but just for fucking wheelchairs. Yeah. Yes, never mind. These magically imbued with low-level transmutation. I don't care how low-level. A magical item of if even level zero or one is like 300 to a couple thousand bucks. Hell, the ever-burned torch is over 100. It's almost 100 and gold pieces. that's literally pieces. just light. That's like the crappiest cantrip or orison you can do. That's out, that's out of the realm of... That's that's certainly out of the realm out of commoners and uh, even very expensive uh, to very expensive to middle class. To be specific, they carry about the same level of energy as a cantrip spell does, providing enough energy for a little boost. Oh my god, does this come with NOS? Each chair yeah. comes with these... <laughs> stones into an armrest of your choice. Oh, I thought and... it was more like cocaine where you just ground them up and snorted it. <laughs> you I can use it. Cocaine. You can use it in two different ways. The first is you can run your hand or finger it over the over to indicate and guide the chair in whichever direction you want it to go. This was this uh, oh wait, does this mean that does this mean that it was this has like a remote, like kinda like a joystick kind of like electric wheelchair like one of those yeah. Yeah. it's even she even highlights it this use was designed for users who may or may not have full use of their arms or an illness or disability which means they lack the energy to push the chair themselves thus making them even less able to actually be adventurers regardless of where you push or direct the chair using the stone the combat wheelchair always has a base movement speed of 25 feet that's a solid move speed considering that you're in a big thing like but, but that see, it's, it's fair because you oh know, wait! Normal people you... go thirty. Oh, you know what's a cheat? You know what's a cheat? Here's something you can cheese the way. You know how in full plate armor in D and D five point oh, you can you that that wearing full plate armor would make your speed twenty feet. You could use this and then go twenty five feet and skirt around the movement rules that way. Yeah, you could just sit down in a bunch of armor <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and like be like like a literal tank. Well, you could do that as a dwarf, too. Yeah. You're literally... It's literally Timmy's superhero co- uh, costume from uh, South Park. Oh my god, you're right! <laughs> the, like, the second way to use this stone is when faced with ascending or descending the true femur... It stares, the true favored enemy of many a uh, wheelchair user. Additionally, the beacon stone is unique that only responds to the owner's touch. Bullshit! It's gonna have it's gonna have uh, eidetic memory built into this. Uh, what type wheelchair. of wheelchair? Yeah, that's... wait. If it has security features, that's way above that costs the cantrip. money. That costs D- money. Dispel magic has no effect upon the stone. Oh, I'm calling shit. massive, what massive the- bullshit. Oh. Because that, co- and plus, you know, just even doing that costs money. Also, if you had to, if if this stone had contingencies against dispel magic, that would be a high level. That would be a high level magic to make those such contingencies right. possible. Yeah, because like the ni- Gordon kind of disconjunction can do a lot of damage. <laughs> if a ninth level dispel spell can't break this thing, then your homeroom item's a piece of shit that needs to go in the garbage. Yeah? That's supposed to be available to everyone at the first level. All right, here we go. I want to do this one. This one's going to be great. Ascending and descending stairs. We all know dungeons often have a lot of stairs and sweet Aslan. Let's not get started on Cass and Ravelof's maze of steps. Let's face it, stairs are difficult, especially when you're in a wheelchair, which is why the Beacon Stone is here to help. By tapping your fingers or hands against the stone twice, you inform it 
Then it needs to help you go up or down a flight of stairs. As a result, the chair begins to hover, starting at two feet off the ground. Using your fingers or hand on the stone surface, you guide it to go forwards or backwards, depending on which direction the stairs go in. On the staircase, tapping the stone twice to hover up the next step, or tap once if you would like to hover down. The chair will always hover two feet over the step it is above when being used in this manner, and can continue ascending or descending like this until the end of the stairs has been reached. <laughs> oh What's that? A bit of water? Reach- I'll just yeah. tap my fingers. Once you reach the top or bottom of the stairs, you can continue to move the chair as it usually does. Either use the push ribs or by directing it with the stone. So my question. Oh my is God! Oh, oh, I know. I know a way to cheese this. I know a way to cheese this because it needs to have something. It needs to have something. If you put a floating stone underneath it, and you can have the that stone go up while you're in the wheelchair, as long as it has some item two feet under under it you could have it you could have yourself flight you could have yourself cheap and dirty flight that way so there's a, <laughs> actually this this does bring like a big like, so i think someone did mention this but it's like if the chair can if the chair can hover it says nothing here about a weight limit so could everyone just pile under the chair and just float fucking everywhere <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah because that's, since- that's- that's right because like there's no weight limit to this chair so you can be like you know you know 600 pounds like a 600 pound death fan and like it wouldn't matter i think i think the idea is it's your strength score times 15 for its carrying capacity since i saw that but i don't think they this person thought it through fully because if you can tap it so it can float why the fuck can't you just have it but that's that phobic if i if my if it can't hold my 600 pound ass around you would have been cooler you would have been cooler that would be even more like low fantasy but i think would be cool is if it had kind of like a grappling hook that it could just kind of hook shot it kind of has a hook shot feet it has a towing feature that it fires up a it fires into the wall, and it can kind of tow you up the stairs. Well, I have a wheelchair where you can just fly around in a floating armchair. That like would be actually, a- I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I'm, go ahead. Sorry. That would be awesome, too. Sorry, don't worry. There's also the self-propulsion variant. So not only can you <laughs> float, By the way, it doesn't specify when it stops floating. It's just, for some reason, it won't float on floors. I don't know why. Like We all float down floor. here. We all float... <laughs> So anyway, there's the self-propulsion variant, which using create magic item downtime, which is from Xanathar's Guide to Everything. So you need at least three books to make this work. You or an ally can spend the time imbuing a chair with a low-level pulse of of transmutation magic. This typically appears in the form of a dwarven rune engraved into the chair's frame. Good luck if you don't fucking understand that. Once this process has been completed, you will find that you are now able to use telepathy to command the chair's movement, and it will respond accordingly. So now, even if you're fucking broken from the neck down, you can keep going. This telepathy requ- does not require concentration? That's fucking horseshit. Yeah, once Working you need to figure your... out where you need to go, or else you might yeah, like direct your chair to slam you into the wall at fucking 80 miles an hour. But the, what if that's what you deep down desire in your heart to happen? What if it just goes... That's... Or, or you just have that fleeting thought of doing that. <laughs> because, 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 the... because there's dumb thoughts that appear in your head all the Working time. Working off your quick yeah, passing there is, thoughts. there are the dumb thoughts. Like, what if you have depression? You always, like, you always get the thought, like, I really wish I could kill myself. Yeah, that's, a, those are, those are, that's quick passing thoughts right there. So yeah, if you're... because if you're depressed, like, that's, that's like, that, those are, like, quick so you, so your chair will just kill yourself. I'm or like just, I'm just the envisioning wall. the party's walking across the great bridge across the uh, across the Rostov River, and, and your and your wheelchair warlock is just sitting there, and then has a passing thought of, I wonder what would happen if I'd fling myself off the bridge. And it's like <laughs> it's like thirty feet up. So the chair answers his response by fucking catapulting itself off into the depths of the river. Oh. Oh my God! The more we, the more thought we put into this, the more insane this becomes. It is because they mentioned earlier about going up the mountain, like going up a mountain. It's an incline, right? And what are a set of stairs? An incline. So, so you just incline up the bridge's rail, and just the chair proceeds to do a fucking five forty flip down into the deep, <laughs> dark, cold rivers of the Rostov. I like to think that you're doing it. Meanwhile, you're doing like Bethesda style ragdoll physics going down this mountain. No, no, you're, you're strapped in, and you can't get to your button in time. You're fucked. 
I mean, does, does the chair automatically uh, uh, like adhere to it? Like, it's more like the the Mark II bike from GTA, where it just automatically assimilates to things around you. So that thing can be going down a mountain at ninety miles an hour. It just automatically switches to the yeah. Rock. And you just yeah. have the thought, what if I just ride down the entire slope? And you just you get off the mountain path and fall to your death. Actions. <laughs> Can like, I read this? I have like read that anything. One scene from Mac and Me. Oh, oh my gosh, gosh, you're right. <laughs> oh no. Oh, go on, Bicky. Considering you're wheelchair bound, this should be important. Yes. All right. The combat wheelchair can be used as a weapon that can make melee weapon attacks. <laughs> At lower levels, you may wish to use one of these attacks instead of a standard weapon attack. At higher levels, you may want to use the chair in this way for your extra attack. You are considered as being proficient in using your wheelchair as a weapon. There are three types of attacks you can make with your wheelchair. Tire strike. By pivoting on one wheel, you can turn into your momentum. Uh, you can strike a target creature in range with one of your uh, characters, um, uh, one of your chair's rear wheels. Oh Mail my god. Attack your strength. Wait, is that saying strengths and or? Is that what it is? Yeah, or strength and, and or dexterity. You know, like I, all you have like to do is... If, if, if you can apply both your strength and dex, that'd be fucked up. Oh, you gotta do us After doing a sick ollie with your wheelchair, you can hit him with it. Yeah, and that's <laughs> the deal. That's a 1d6 plus the character. And you have reach, by the way. And, it, and if you're like a rogue, too, that basically turns your daggers into pieces of shit, is what they do. Oh, God. Uh, ram. Oh, could you imagine a sneak attack with a sneak attack with a wheelchair? <laughs> don't worry, don't don't okay. worry, master. I, don't I worry, wanna... big guy. The the wheelchairs can't hurry you where we are. I just want to <laughs> ask, how the fuck can you be dexterous with a wheelchair tire? I don't know. It's it's my question it's... is how the fuck you can do an ollie on one wheel without falling over and, and, and recreating the lifeline. <laughs> Moment of I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's mean, but if you're angled at such a way, there's a good shot you fuck it up and land on your side. Ram, by moving Ram, ten, but I, I got this. I'm doing the attacks, asshole. By moving <laughs> ten feet in a straight line towards a small or medium creature, you can bodily slam the chair into the target creature. So if they're large. So if they're large, you're at larger or larger than you're you're fucked. <laughs> what does an elevator count as? I I'm just know. Some people <laughs> where, like this seems like a charge. <laughs> this doesn't seem quite like a charge attack, but it basically has all the bo- positive of a, par- a charge attack with none of the downsides. <laughs> as in, you don't. It, it, it's not explicitly saying you don't. You only have one action to do uh, a charge attack when it comes to ram. So thanks for thanks for trivializing um, charge, bitch. <laughs> The combat wheel. If the attack is made uh, using the uh, optional feature Swift, the chair deals an additional four bludgeoning damage to a target creature on a successful hit. Because of course, why why do weapons? With, why do damage with your real people weapons when you could just run them fucking over? The question is, yeah. why don't you just why don't you on, instead of for attacks on the wheelchair that you instead of doing dumbass shit like this, why don't you just put like blades on the sides of the wheelchair By and the way, then you go to stop? Mind that this this works for anyone like if. If you really wanted to be a douchebag, you could be a wizard and do this. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck moving. The creature must succeed a DC 14 strength save or be pushed back five feet from you. Again, I, I bet. trivializing this, the fuck out of charge. Does this mean that Mazda Mundi has a... Does Mazda Mundi have a combat wheelchair? No, that means Yoda has a combat wheelchair that can fly and he just <laughs> runs into you. Ugh. But... Uh, if what? the target... Uh, the last one is crush. If the target oh. creature is prone on the ground, you can choose to roll your wheelchair over them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know th- this is the very least I like. Um, Stuck it's yours. on the ground, you have become crush. You with chair, I must. Max it's your pain, I will inflict. Okay, the- let's begin. <laughs> oh yeah. Strength and dexterity modifier plus proficiency with advantage to hit a five feet reach on target, and it's one d a plus your strength and or dexterity modifier. If this attack is made with swift again, the chair deals an additional four bludgeoning damage to the target on a successful hit. 
I Thank mean, you. it only works if they're prone, but still. Also, that seems like doesn't if they're prone on the ground, and you're doing something like that. Doesn't it, that's kind of a cruel act? That's kind of a fucking uh, savage act to take right there. Well, that's revenge for More that's for revenge for the chair flinging them off a bridge at maximum velocity. <laughs> I would think if your opponent is prone on the ground, they've already lost. <laughs> if your opponent's just... prone on the ground, they need a wheelchair too. I mean, you're <laughs> after, what, after point... what the party did to them. At that point, you're just running over their nuts to teabag them. <laughs> you give them teabag. You know, I, don't know, I know what this is. They want you to horribly cripple other creatures so it's forced to use the combat wheelchair. Becoming <laughs> yeah, a great you know how I feel. <laughs> so, this is a this is a sadistic marketing. This I is wonder... a sadistic Oh my god, it's a sadistic pyramid scheme. I wonder, right what, I wonder like I wonder like after you run a mobile, do you like encounter them again and like they're in the combat wheelchair <laughs> and you have to fight them? They're in their <laughs> own. It's a continuous fight, and the more you run like you defeat them again, you come back and they're in a new one with more weapons on. <laughs> <laughs> and, like they have the they have like the electric variant where they just press the stone because you broke their arms. Like the final <laughs> battle is they're in a combat iron lung. <laughs> <laughs> they're, in, they're in a combat wheelchair that's like that's like the fucking one that Christopher Pike was in after the accident. Where they you, had it you had it perfect the first time. First time you beat him, you break his legs. Second time, arms. Third time, neck. So by the fourth time, it's just like he's basically a vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> he's in a. He's in the. Yeah, he's in the Christopher Pike wheelchair from Star Trek, or or like da, or like Davros's chair. <laughs> Oh my god, there's fucking someone hell. someone standing there with them and like, there's a little like torch in the front that flashes twice. He said he's going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> How tough is the chair? If you see the game of wheelchair basketball or rugby, you'll understand that chairs, the chairs are used are very durable and can stand the impact of tackling at high speeds. Uh, there's a difference between that and some fuck coming down with an axe. Yeah, like I imagine a troll hitting you with their club would probably break a one of those normal chairs. The combat wheelchair does not have hit points the same way a sword or shield does it. Bullshit. Actually, I, I know this is five E, but don't don't weapons still have HP or did they remove? Yes, that? they still uh, have HP. No, I think they removed that in five E. I'm not a hundred percent positive on that. I think they still have hit points. At least two. In- they might still be there for posterity reasons because you have stuff like rust monsters still. However, it can withstand three consecutive critical hits before it needs repairing or tinker with our smith's tools. You can yeah, also don't you like how you can't completely destroy it? You can just break it. Yeah, like you can't you can just also... completely destroy it. No, that would that would be that would actually potentially cause some troubles or challenges that they have to face until they get a new one. No, no, no. You just you just pull out the tools and instantly fix it, probably with like a DC five check. Also, you can pay for the chair to be repaired at the cost of a hundred gold pieces. Once repaired, the chair is good as new. Oh, oh, to be fair, oh, it got mauled by it got. So your your wheelchair was horribly uh, broken in half, incinerated, nearly incinerated, it, it was and crushed uh, by a minotaur and scorched by an angry red dragon. But don't worry, it's good as new now. Yeah. I mean, also, it was a half molten wreck by the time you brought well, it. Well, so the chair it. needs to be repaired. You can still use it for everyday task. Bullshit. Uh, ascending and descending stairs. No! No! What that's if all what the broken... wheels are broken? Like, or the goblins stole it, and it's just a fucking seat. No, that's not how this works. If it needs to be repaired, that means it's broken. You can't use... That's like saying that... That's like saying that, oh no, even though, even though I can't use the fast-forward rewind or play i could still use the stop feature on my vcr why don't you it's just have it be a hover chair or something then that way if it gets broken you can maybe put wheels on it as a jury rig the chair must take three times the amount of critical hits it can withstand before it can be repaired what, consecutively what? so it has to take nine now i thought it was withstanding three so oh, so that's that's if it uh that's before it ha- it's rendered completely broken. Ah. So it, it takes nine crits to destroy this thing. And remember, it's under a thousand gold pieces. You need to confirm nine crits to completely destroy also, this what thing. Also, what about AOEs? Like, what if you're just... What if it's just going to get doused with acid? Is this thing... 
technically because those are not critical hits does that mean that you just that this thing can take it like a boss well i mean this thing has these stones that apparently are completely immune to dispelling for no reason at all other than horseshit like it's even stupider as you go down like uh the rulings of critical hits and how they affect a chair are completely optional you don't have to use them in your game in order to have a fun experience so, so, you can just, just so your already indestructible chair could just be more indestructible. But this is but any character any character can do this. This is totally I, I mean, fair. It's totally fair to have a person who can't walk not only casually go upstairs that you know and ignore traps that are on the stairs, but also carry more items than everyone else, gain another weapon that usually is better than some weapons that a class can actually harry, carry. Like, hey, let's say you're a wizard and you decide to attack physically. I mean, you're stupid by doing this, but whatever. Yeah, you you still do one d six rather than the knife. But even with this, it's it's ridiculous. There's no negative loss to the chair. That's and what's killing positive. me. And and even if it's All busted, positive. it still does everything. Yeah. You just like, lose the be attack like war- functions. It'd be like your warlock running out of MP, but he's still casting magic. <laughs> and there's like no negatives. It's not like casting from the HP or something. Yeah. Oh, you're out of MP. We're using like a Final Fantasy logic where let's let's say you're like the black mage in Final Fantasy and you use up all your dark spells, you know, your fires and your ices and your thunders. Yeah. And you're just able to casually... Oh no, you can't cast Flare. But you can still cast, like, Thundaga. No negatives, you just can still cast Magic. Yep. No loss. No loss of thing. What the fuck? Oh, who wants to tackle the optional features? Oh, there's a lot of them. This is basically the rest of the article. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll breeze through it and mock most of them, so it'll be easy. Okay, optional features... Oh shit, I just lost it. Fuck. Where'd it go? Oh, there we go. Optional features. Uh, Swift, when you're going downhill, you can choose to let gravity make you roll faster because you control gravity now as well. The combat wheelchair designed by the top pack led scientists throughout the (laughs) Alpha Quadrant, they make it go fast. (laughs) If you (laughs) you have a 50 foot movement speed going downhill, unless you choose to keep a tight control. If you choose to retain control, the chair's movement speed stays at its base of 25 feet. Uh, Mac and me clip. <laughs> now, now we go down here. If you decide to roll faster, you must bear in mind that you can't come to an abrupt halt. Instead, you must use your hands or the emergency brakes on your two rear wheels to slow down. <laughs> Which is, So if you don't have emergency brake, how do you stop? <laughs> also, what happens if it's like the meme where your e-brakes, uh, e-brakes give out it's like you're going too fast? <laughs> Especially when you're going, you're going in rear at near infinite levels. That this, the dangers of going at five times the speed of light backwards. So, also, no, you're if you're going at great speeds, if you're going great speeds, you can't suddenly stop without having horrible damage of whiplash. Whiplash is a thing. But by, by the That's... way. You only slow down by 10 feet per round, so good luck if you want to not fall. Like, let's say you're going down a hill to fight some pirates or some shit. Good luck not falling in the pier and fucking drowning. It's like, okay, like this one right here. Due to the chair's fifth wheel acting as a stabilizer, staple you'll find on many wheelchairs. Not like medieval fucking wheelchairs, dick back. (laughs) You're lucky to get two wheels back in the day. (laughs) This fucking float chair is killing me. If your chair does get knocked prone, you are not thrown out of it so long as you are wearing the seat belts. You can release these belts at any time using a bonus action to press the buttons on the clasp. So is that because they said they had shins, legs, and ankles, or like whatever it was? So does that mean if I do that action, they all automatically disconnect? Yeah, and your legs just like let's say you land sideways backwards, your legs just kind of immediately land on your face, and you have to push them off. Also, like, who gives a shit if you're knocked prone and, like, the belts won't save your ass. You're still on the floor. Oh, nope, nope, because that covers it. Whilst you are in the chair and the chair is prone, you are also considered prone in any close-range melee weapon attacks made against you have advantage. Oh, wait, no, it is good. Never mind. I thought it said you had Fair enough. <laughs> at least, there's, at least they have to apply that logic. Oh, this, this is the embarrassing part. You must use your own half-movement to get up if you are thrown out of the chair. So you gotta do a roll to get back in the fucking chair. <laughs> no, you, have to use, you only have to use half of an act, a move action or something. Oh. Oh. 
I think if you're still in the chair when it is prone, you must use the chair's half movement to push it back up if you are in a back up unaided. This is reduced to zero movement if you are assisted by an ally. I don't think I don't think five E has half moves. There is no difference. There is no difference between able character able character being knocked prone and spinning their movement getting back up. Well, well, half <laughs> movements. What's that mean? You can do like half your move speed afterwards. That's uh, kind of horseshit. Yeah. Oh, so it's so you're just as good, but somehow better. But ignore that because re. Oh, here we go. Tuning. When you attune to magical items, the effect of the item is shared between you and the combat wheelchair when you are in the chair. For example, boots of flying, because that was the perfect choice to start with. Yeah, just <laughs> in, utterly pointless now. In accordance with the Dungeon Master's guilds, aren't designed with disabled adventurers in mind. Well, Some disabled disa doesn't oh, mean wheelie, wheelie, legs, no feely. Yeah. Disabled can mean yeah, you just like can't fucking read. Are you are you like autistic or like you have Down syndrome or you have Parkinson's and the shakes are starting to inhibit your life? Or also, what if you're like, what if you have something like Werner's disease and you're uh, you're starting to literally age yourself to the point of uh, not being able to do stuff like this? Oh yeah, this, or or what if you have the Alzheimer's and you're just forgetting the last, things? The last paragraph really does not work well with this. Because they use the boots of flying as their example. Using this feature, when you attune to a magical item and you're using the chair, both you and the chair share the item's benefit and any effects it may have. When you get out of the chair, only you retain the benefit of the item. So if you're wearing the boots of flying and you get out of your chair, do the legs just go right up? <laughs> your non-functional legs you fly, like, fly up and you're stuck. Help me! Wheelie, <laughs> wheelie, at, at legs, no feely. <laughs> Hang it upside down, and you just start spinning in place. Because <laughs> you can't control it. You can't. It's kind of like a, it's like those RC cars that if you get flipped over, just kids are these spinning. <laughs> You're just doing sick donuts in the air. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, no. <laughs> this is horrible. This is horrible. Mounted combat. For characters that are looking to specialize in mounted combat, the combat wheelchair is considered, yes, wheelchair jousting's a thing! Yes! Oh, no. <laughs> yes, this... I, you know what I see in this universe? It, like, dumb college frat parties, there's, these are going to have wheelchair jousting fights. <laughs> no, what they should have done is they should put like you know you know the you know the guards on some of the old steam railways. You just sharpen one of the rail guards, put it on the wheelchair, put spikes <laughs> on it, and then, and then like I don't know, put thrusters on the back with a lance, and you just scream, "Witness me!" As you just charge forward. <laughs> It's channeling my my inner childish dreams of having a wheelchair rocket wheelchair that you could use as I mean, a fucking mount. Whoa. Why is it only limiting to a polearm lance or halberd? Why can't I just put swords on it or like fucking like just surround Naginata. it with poison daggers? Or what yeah. if I put what if I put spikes on it and I'm just gonna use it as a can I have basic... shoulder mounted crossbows? I what mean, about... why are you limiting my choices here? Also, where why can't I just have rocket why can't I have like like you know rocket, battle rocket rocket blow darts? Yes, it's like a watcha. <laughs> can, I get charged, can, I get, can I get a bunch of charged magic wands and just have them poking out of random spots of the chair? Oh my god! No, no, no! What you do with the combat wheelchair is you take you you tape a bunch of uh, wands together to all trigger on one instance, and you just fire a magic missile bat. You become a magic missile battery. I'm just, I'm just envisioning this is how the equivalent of like the Soviet Union in Five E. This, this is Stalin's pipe organs. <laughs> just a bunch of crippled pages, just like with a with like a wheelchair with wands, just arcing Kelgor's fire bolts. <laughs> <laughs> wheelchair Wrong heavy cavalry. It's the, the starting. Hour Could you imagine? Chair. No, no, no. Oh, oh, I was gonna add one thing: the wheelchair cavalry. You know, imagine you know the scene. You know, the two towers. You know, instead of the hor the Rohirrim horses charging down, it was a bunch of wheelchairs charging just, down at the I'm just, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> Like, like as the dawn breaks, you just see Timmy from South Park. Live a lot, Timmy. <laughs> a horde of them start coming. <laughs> they form a cripple. If there's enough of them, they form the cripple tron. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
So anyway, Master, you're just going to start yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, starting out with the chair, because you're already breaking all the fucking rules, so let's just go a little further. <laughs> the standard combat wheelchair, as has been described to you thus far, costs 200 GP, which oh, is shit. more expensive than a simple wheelchair, typically 5 GP. So the ones that are 5 GP must be made out of, like, animal bones or some shit. It's, it's like, like plank of wood and, and two fucking wheelbarrow wheels. It is the equivalent of like the 1930s taking a roller skate and putting the skates under a, like a two by four and riding around. <laughs> on There's your poverty. There's your poverty thing. It, it's two wheelbarrow wheels. Uh, so, wait, 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 wait. Is it like a rich kid in the port, the poverty kid in the poverty wheelchair? Look at you. I have the combat wheelchair. Look the poverty you, wheelchair was- your poverty wheelchair was a plank of wood with like two wheels on it. You just, <laughs> point A to point B was a day trip. It was like a sort like one of those like like swivel chairs that like you just have someone push for you. What about if your character who is beginning their adventures and is disabled from the get go? Perhaps you, you were why would anyone? Why would any of your loved ones let you fucking leave? Yeah, most of you wouldn't live that long. They would just kill you out of kindness. But whatever. <laughs> Or maybe part of your backstory includes an accident or injury that predates your career as an adventurer. If this is the case, speak with your DM and consider having the combat wheelchair be part of your items without having to pay for it. Because, Bullshit. of course. Perhaps you paid for one already as part of your backstory. Of course. Because, you know, when I started my game, I paid for a fucking, you know, giant wyvern that I ride around on, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, to give you I an idea. To- yeah, totally. My, uh, t- totally. My, my... Uh, totally my Warblade slash Disciple of Dissipator in our Friday games. You know, the epic level monstrosity that she is. She totally started with a plus five magical Falchion that hits, that when crits, does a slow effect and a was a fan. Spray. She, crit. Yeah. she could probably destroy your combat wheelchair. Yes, my guy, my character was digging through his father's attic and he just happened across the Sword of a Thousand Sorrows. And <laughs> I mean, it's not like she had to start with just a standard fucking master was, worker. The character's back. This is one of the sins of character creation. It was in my backstory. Exactly. This, this wheelchair that should cost like 50,000 gold pieces because of the fucking unbreakable nature of it. <laughs> I don't give a shit how reasonably smallish the effects are. You're still a little bit better than Adventure, but like that's just kind of quality of life thing. It's kind of like a belt of healing. But the fact you can't break it, that's horseshit. Yeah. And there's no law. The you can't take no penalty for it either. There's no penalty for the loss of your wheelchair. If you lose your wheelchair, your movement speed should drop drastically. To like 10, <laughs> 10 or 5 foot. Perhaps you would like to go forego having skills you have acquired as part of your background and take the wheelchair. <laughs> why? Why have skills when you could just be the wheelchair? When you have skills, you could have wheels. <laughs> it's actually getting kind of disturbing if you think about it, because you're not the person; you're the wheelchair in this book. That's Rem- kind of, which is kind of ableist in of itself. Like, remember the remember the combat wheelchair does not give an advantage over the able character's bullshit. We only learned oh. it. Oh. Extra worry, weight, don't worry, extra item equipment, ability to ignore traps on stairs. Well, oh yeah, that. like you should not be punished for something you cannot help, and to be punished for having a disability is cruel. You know what's what's even more cruel? You know, not recognizing your limit, not being able to recognize your limits as a person with a disability. Well, if you happen to take a lasting injury, you otherwise on your travels, you can buy a combat wheelchair at any time for 200 GP from any good merchant, because you know they're going to be carrying these fuckers oh around. My, oh my god, <laughs> yeah, con- this, like, this so is many. a for 200 gold pieces, this is yeah. this is a marketing stunt. I'm just almost envisioning, like, you know Crazy Hassan the Camel Trader? I'm just envisioning his brother, Insane Akbar, the man who <laughs> found a warehouse filled with these, and he's like desperately trying to get rid of them. I got. Uh, please buy these combat wheelchair. I need to pay. I need to get money. My children. Five thousand. I have five thousand dollars and get to the Hashashim Guild. They'll kill me. Yeah, like... <laughs> They'll kill me. <laughs> my, uh, my wife and daughters will will starve without this. <laughs> anyone can be a hero. 
Yeah, but y you ruin the extra heroic natures by removing the weaknesses and flaws of the person. Plus, like, the thing about being a hero is that, like, you're kind of supposed to be, like, um... <laughs> no, like, if, every, if anyone could be a hero, there would be no heroes. It yeah, reminds like, me you, of... Oh, I'm, gonna, you, I'm sorry. You oh, go, go first, ahead. and then me. I was gonna say, you're reminding me of that guy from, uh, like, Family Guy, the wacky waving guy. It's like Crazy Carson's collection of Covenant Combat Wheelchairs. Crazy Carson's collection of Combat Wheelchairs. <laughs> Crazy Carson's Covenant collection of Combat Wheelchairs. <laughs> can we name that? Can you? That, that that needs to be the name of the episode. <laughs> nah, it's Goblin stole my wheelchair. <laughs> Goblin stole my wheelchair, and you just have they're on a fucking joyride. I I Goblin just stole my wheelchair at the w wacky um uh, wheelchair emporium. Yeah, what happened is I bought it from Crazy Carlson's, and, and then as soon as I bought it, Goblin stole it, and I don't got a refund. <laughs> yeah. I'm I mean, sorry, there's no, there's no, there's no refund, loser. I no. understand why they're stolen. I mean, they're coveted. It's right there in the fucking title. <laughs> no, no, even, uh, even worse, they just took the wheels off it. Like, uh, oh my god, in, oh, cars in a bad neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> Fuckers. Uh, but uh. So, no, 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 here's what happens. As part of, this is a scam. You buy a combat wheelchair, and then these goblins come to steal the wheels off of it, so now you have to go buy a new one. It's just a massive scam. <laughs> oh, this is... The but more yeah, you read the, it, the, the, Before, uh, the, the whole majesty and coolness of, of fighting in spite of your limitations. I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna use an anime example. My Hero Academia, with All Might's body failing, completely, basically, he's losing his ability to fight because of his broken body. But he's even more of a hero because of it, because he knows that one day he can't fight any longer. But he does it anyway. Or actually, Izuku, too, before he gained his power. Knew he had no powers, went against creatures and monsters, you know, villains that could kick his ass. It's, it's who you are as the person in spite of your limitations, not because of your limitations. Or to use a more topical series, uh, Black Clover, where the lead character, Asta, does not have the ability to use magic. And his magical power is not giving up. Wibs! <laughs> at, anyway. at least I used a fantasy-based fucking series. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 wait, 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 because this thing wasn't broken as enough. Upgrades! Oh man, now now we're selling. This is you see. This is what happens. You buy the base wheelchair. Now you have to sell the upgrades. And now this your two hundred gold piece wheelchair is suddenly suddenly you're going to get heavily in loans and debt in order to. You pay don't even have it. to. You don't even have to purchase them. They're all free. Wait, uh, what? wait what? Oh no 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 no! I know how you can get the combat wheelchair. You buy on credit. <laughs> <laughs> you buy... Upgrades so far. We've been shown the basics of the wheelchair, as well as a few optional rules and features. But what if you would like to tailor your wheelchair to you? How how can you go about making it suit your skill sets? This is where the upgrades come in. There's a lot. Of, there's a variety of upgrades available to you on your journey, and they typically can be bought affixed to your wheelchair at any any blacksmith. Yeah, and even the ones that only know how to make nails and horseshoes can make it. Artificers or exactly. for. <laughs> oh, so wait, does this mean that the blast forge on the middle of the fucking boonies and the, uh, that, you know, these tribals that they, you know, the bronze forging may be the pinnacle of their technology. They're going to totally know how to work this. Not even bronze forging. They just, they take, they take surface metals like meteoric iron and just hammer into a shape. Yeah, they could totally make these. Get your wild wheel combat wheelchair in a way that best suits you and find yourself against whilst adventuring out in the world. Even more fun. Part of the combat wheelchair lets it to your own home bruise, so why not make a special upgrade of your own? It's called the I win button. I press it and I win. <laughs> no, no, you need to you need to pull like Megas XLR. You have a button that says missiles, more missiles, all the missiles, and you just press all three. <laughs> Don't bring good stuff into this. The combat wheelchair can only have two upgrades on it at any one time in order to keep the chair functional enough for both adventuring yeah. and functional. You cannot functional. stack you, you can stack more, just it won't work for everything. Wait a minute, no, no, you can't you can get upgrades removed, but wait, 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 can't you just keep the upgrade parts in the other in your bag or something, and then you whatever you need? the tinker tools to swap them out, yeah. Yes. 
I think there's a thing about that with these here down a little further. So uh, there's a pretty big list. There's agile suspensions. Um, I think we'll just sum them up because eh. yeah, it, well, like there's some parts you need to point out. Like, oh my god, the, the the agile suspension. That's what allows you to do Tokyo drifting shit in a combat wheelchair. Like, like there is a mention. They actually did make sure to point out, like for example, further down is the upgrade armored plates. You can't use agile with armored plates. So they did cover a few bases fairly. A little bit. Yeah. All terrain I remembered. Oh my god! You turn yourself into the monster truck wheelchair. <laughs> Yeah, well, you're, no, no, you're all terrain tires. By the way, tires are misspelled with a Y because eyes are evil. Okay, no, no, no. I know what it is. You're gonna go mudding in a. Does this mean that you're like a hillbilly in a combat wheelchair? You're gonna go mudding in a wheelchair. You're gonna go yes. mudding in your combat wheelchair. You can, even, you can even use it in water, according to this. But each tire weighs nine pounds. <laughs> that means you can have like one different tire of each quality. Oh bullshit! Bullshit that you had 260 gold pieces for arcane absorption. That's retardedly broken a for the amount throw of. throw against a spell that deals cold fire or lightning damage. So basically, you gain what outsiders have, which is a level of, you know adjustment, at least in the old in the old systems. You get that basically for fucking free. Not for free, mm-hmm. but like for 260 gold pieces. That's, that's pretty chunk. fucking ridiculous. That's retardedly cheap. And you can use it twice per long rest. And usually in, in combat, you only deal with, what, two to four encounters per? Oh my god, the armor plates guarantee plus two to your combat wheelchair. So, you see, my my previous example... Yeah. My previous example, if you go for a, a mounted combat build, you could have this and gain an additional bonus to your armor class while uh, being fully armored and not suffering as much of a movement uh, malice as you would in normal plate armor. You forgot the more horseshit you can do. You can then oh. make it mithril to cut the weight in half. Oh, by the way, the critical bullshit, you know that critical, like, you have oh, to yeah. hit Double. 20s multiple times. Yeah, six <laughs> times to damage it enough to where it doesn't work right. And then you have to do it, like, 18 times. No, no, six t- 36 times. Oh, my God. <laughs> floats, floats, you can turn yourself into, it turns into, is, are we going into James Bond now? Is this, like, is, 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 is this like what uh is Q just saying that James Bond, the James double O double O not is he's he's the uh, bat, poor bastard that's crippled, so he has this wheelchair with all this secret spy features. You're thinking <laughs> that I'm thinking more like Speed Racer if done really dumb. <laughs> like this oh is, yeah, this is the mock. This is the mock three point eight. <laughs> there's no explanation as to how the inflator deflate though. It was a wheelchair mm-hmm. machine designed for the monkey in Speed Racer. There you go. Oh, I love this mounted sniper. You can mount guns to. It. You can you can mount guns to it. So anyway, I started blasting. <laughs> I, I will admit that all the things they've talked about so far, that one doesn't sound unrealistic. You could do that from a sitting. Position. Oh wait a minute! Can, you could put swi- It's like putting swivel gun. You're like a ship, and you're putting swivel guns on you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, could you get more than one of? Could you get if they're small enough? Couldn't you get more than one of them? And then if you make a special device, you could fire them all at one time. Or, you, or uh, you could do a, re- a crank revolver revolver musket. <laughs> oh my time. god! Dual weld puckle guns. Oh my god! No, no, it's. I remember they did in MythBusters the repeating crossbow. You could put a bunch of repeating crossbows on it. So there's also the parting ram where you just you put a ram on your wheelchair and you just enact my my inner childhood Viking dreams. And you absolutely do not take any. Uh, this one does not have a statement stating you can't use it with the armor. Oh, thank you, thank you, uh, Randall. I was thinking of that. Yes, <laughs> yes. So you could you could put that parting ram on your armored one and you would be a unstoppable monster tank. For oh, all of you that are wondering what our dear friends are doing about in a chat, um, it looks like Randall just posted FDR with a fuckload of machine guns, it, it appears to be. Yep, there it is. Looks good. Oh my. FDR, the American badass. That's nothing. You know how chariots had blades on the sides that you used to knee exactly. people? Exactly, yeah. You could do that with nice. a wheelchair, too. <laughs> <laughs> Except the whole idea was those were being fast enough to do damage. So, so you can do one d six plus one d four damage to your to that you know we pop a ollie bullshit. 
But they can that's, be slivers. That's for damage. Feet. That's damage on par of some of the highest tier, some of the high tier two handed weapons, including your Dex and Strength bonus, and you both get bludgeoning and slashing damage. Oh, gee. <laughs> so the only thing you don't get is piercing, which is. But this is totally this is totally made to make you par with other characters. You're just as and good then, as everyone else. You just do everything better. Scatter attacks. Scatter attacks are just caltrops. That's it. And you have a special compartment just using your hand. Oh my god! You this is James Bond. You so just you're going to the deploy. You're thing. going to. Does this mean you can also deploy uh, emergency smoke to get away? That I'm you're putting James Bond. I'm thinking more wacky <laughs> races. Uh, I'm concerned about the fact that like you can upgrade it to be filled with sixty, but the idea of caltrops is not throwing sixty of them down at a time. Hey, you only it's have throwing a, a small handful in the corridor. Yeah. <laughs> Just... So, so with sixty, you could probably cover I don't know, like twenty feet worth. I mean, yeah, if you're getting chased by an army or something. <laughs> oh, shin shredders! You just put blades in front of the rear wheels. But it sounds stupid. It's a horrible name for that. Well, <laughs> as the blades cut into the skin, they cause great pain, make quick movements harder for the target creature. All blades do that. That's not a surprise. It's If you stab something, it's going to hurt. <laughs> but now they have a disadvantage on their next attack, because you stabbed them and it hurt. Come on, let's get to the best one. Spider legs. Spider legs. Oh my god, this is wild, wild. This is wild, wild west. This is wild, wild west. This is wild, wild, wild west. As you crawl <laughs> on walls and shit with the spider legs. Look, if you look, if it does not come with a net launcher that shoots out of the front, I don't fucking want it. <laughs> it, better, it better have a net launcher. God. Wild, wild west. Yeah, by the way, guys, like, my computer's a potato. Sorry if I kind of. That well, your computer's as disabled as the person that made this yeah, content. <laughs> yeah, absolutely annoying. Okay, like right off the spider legs. Yes, it's eight mechanical legs. They're powered by a small, intricate, and extremely expensive construct engine that is also affixed under the seat of the chair. Wait, it's does like, this mean this thing is powered by spirits that you imprison in the engine? A la gold oh, no, it's, it's oh my dwarven. god, it's a dwarven. Oh must do all the fucking work. I guess. Oh my god, you know what this is. This is a this is a uh, this is a hell cannon. This is made by the uh, Chaos Dawi. <laughs> yeah, oh, because God. I mean, if it's a, if it's a construct engine, that means that it is literally powered by a spirit you trap within the wheelchair. Oh my God! Or now can you imagine seeing right? a chaos? Could you see a chaos like you know a, a, <laughs> a chaos I knight? A chaos, I could see a chaos dwarf that uses like a, a, a spider wheelchair with like a like a big fucking musket. Here we go. <laughs> Additionally, the construct engine can only be used for one hour at a time before needing to recharge itself for two hours. It is a self charging, sustaining itself on a small core of hellfire that burns eternally. No, that's the soul of the spirit you've trapped in there forever. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, this actually costs money. It's like three thousand five hundred. Oh wow, it actually costs some money. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's still like for what it is, that's about right for a price. Dispel magic has no effect on this upgrade. Bullshit. Oh, never mind. Add another ten k at least. Oh, here we go. Never mind. Suppression tires, stealth tires. They're stealth tires. <laughs> literally, literally, even rogues can just sneak up on you and steal your wheelchair while they're in the wheelchair. Ha ha, bitches! No, he goes to steal it. It's like I'm away. <laughs> Loser. Thunder and you trip. also get oh thunder trip. Yeah, it's uh it has a symbol of evocational magic carved into the armpits of your choosing. The symbol holds two charges on the first level of evocation spell, Thunder Wave. You can spend a charge at any time to cast a spell, blah 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 blah. You know the math. It's but like, the yeah, fact you know, is you can do that as a normal as like a non caster, which is kind of horseshit. What constitutes as an upgrade? If I attach a shield to the side of my wheelchair, does that mean my chair gets a plus two AC bonus? No, your chair would not get the bonus. But what, but if Let's I see. just put random hunks of metal on the sides, which is what the plating is, yeah, you do. Yeah, they oh, actually mentioned that. Yeah, attaching the armor plates upgrade and attaching a standard shield is that the upgrade has been specifically designed to fit the chair. Uh, okay, so if I'm holding a shield in front of me, a sh it's held close to my body. If I put that in front of me, it's doing its job. Yeah, why don't you just, like, if you just <laughs> angle it on a holder, it does the same fucking thing. Actually, since it's a wheelchair, you could be an even bigger douchebag and put two shields. Thus, 
you're the you're the character. This is a oh. that guy. We're creating the that guy character. No, no, no. Here we go. <laughs> last thing. The last thing besides all the the, the ass kissing is the just the mundane items. Small mundane items like lamps, bedrolls, packs, and even small chests, etc., can be affixed to the chair's frame at no additional cost other than the price you paid for the item. Which makes it even easier for a normal person who has to factor in things like weight and occupation space. Well, the thing awesome. right here, small magical items such as the bag of holding can be affixed. Oh my god! Oh storage. my god! You could put, you could put with those extra pouches. You could all make them bag of holding, and then you could, you could essentially ultimately cheese the game to make you just the oh, ultimate man. pack of you. Yeah, you like don't even bring a person in the wheelchair. Just purchase the wheelchair, and you've got a mobile fucking general store with you at all times. <laughs> you, have a, you have a because... mobile arm. You have a mobile. You have a mobile uh, armor. You have a mobile yeah, fighting do. platform. And on top of that, you could just put you could put on it the rune that allows self propulsion. So you could just have every party member just envision. Oh, I know how this goes. I, I know how this could work in larger things. You could make a huge size one of these bastards. You can double and... the amount of weird wheelchair attacks. Like every oh my person god. gets a wheelchair as oh a my god. minion that they can psycho <sighs> psychokinetically control with the with the brainwave thing. I know Jesus. how you can do this. You can you can get it, make a huge size combat wheelchair and use it as a Hoda where archers are sitting on top of it going to fire you down really on do that. <laughs> you can get you can get a legion of large sized ones. So they the, their damage scale upgrades, and then because they have the self propulsion system, you can just order it telekinetically to do whatever the fuck you want. Wheelchair attack, and you can flank with the wheelchair, <laughs> and, and they'd be nearly impossible to kill. <laughs> they are. The, the chair has proven to be the most useful piece of equipment anybody could ever get. And remember, it's supposed to equalize things, not make them better. And also, was... you're supposed to treat the person as the character, not the wheelchair. And that, and that was everything. We're not going to bring the we're not going to bring the creator into this because, yeah. aside from laughing at her, we're not laughing. Aside from at laughing her, at the ideas, yeah, and making if... some off color jokes. We're not going to make fun of her actual disabilities. We're just laughing at the terrible That's product the... that she made. That's for you, the, the the viewers, to do. Please put down your <laughs> dankest jokes in the comments. Uh, oh, but in reality, let's have a let's have an honest discuss. Let's have a bit of an honest discussion about now if somebody does want to actually make a disabled character. I mean, there's nothing inherently wrong with it. In fact, uh, done right, you can actually make a very compel a very compelling character. Yeah, like I mean, one of my examples that like I have like the I'm gonna like eventually do is this diops the like jester who is who is illiterate and as well as computer illiterate because this is greyhawk uh, 2000 God, my ears <laughs> yeah it's you're the, kind it's of the techno out. it's the device it just it's gonna be an it, issue like for example I gave one example I gave is playing a cripple, either playing a ranger that has a shape change or playing a druid that with your animal forms that uh, you're crippled. But the only way you can really get around is and you, you choose to mostly stay in animal forms because those are the only ways that you do that. That may could have been the reason why you became a druid. That's could have been why the reason you became a druid or why you are a caster that uses mostly transmutation spells. It's the only way to feel like that you're a complete person you could play uh you could play a ranger as a ranger as kind of like the burned man from fallout where you have to tend to your because after the injuries you have these massive scars and you're restricted on your flexibility and you have to take care of your skin because it can dry out or get infected I would think I would go along something the lines. If you're going to play somebody that has a disability, you make the disability not something that you want to improve on, but something that is actually beneficial. For example, let's say I was playing a quadriplegic berserker. You know, I just have my teammates strap my weapons to me. Someone casts the bounce spell on me, and this throws me into a group of enemies. Uh, alternatively, you could have a play a character where your horrible scars may be a part of your character, like a. Like you're playing a Shisho like Makoto Joshua, type. Like Joshua Graham again. But I was I was bringing up the character from Aroni Kenshin where. Uh, then where there's also he... like then there's also like the invisible disabilities too, like dyslexia, autism, even like 
schizophrenia. Mental Schizoph- yeah, mental illness. You could have a di- who suffered a stroke and can't speak anymore. You can also be a, a depression. Or maybe your character has crippling has crippling depression or anxiety. Uh, B- bipolar yes. disorder where you go th- between massive ups and downs and you can't control it. A manic depress Wait, a manic depressive could be interesting to play that you know if you're manic you may be just throw all your money around willy-nilly but while you're depressed you might be more often to take more fatalistic actions. Like you're more willing to go to uh sorcerer. <laughs> That's a depressed sorcerer who doesn't care about what level of magic he's casting. Or, or again, <laughs> my favorite concept, uh, which admittedly isn't a very good one because it wouldn't be practical, but in the Elder Scrolls games, one of the longest running builds I always usually start a game with is a, a character I just kind of termed the Blind Bowman, whose basic backstory was started life as part of the imperial you know as part of the imperial army but that after a conflict he lost his eyesight uh, but because this is all he really knew how to do effectively for de- you know for decades at this point he tries to still do it despite not really being able to see anymore he has to use the hearing and well guidance he has to have people aim him effectively Similar to the, like I said, the blind Hungarian king. Blindness can be a very interesting character flaw. Oh uh, yeah, one of my yeah. my character, my character in the evil game. He's now blind. Well, well Mir is now. Sense, but like, you don't but start st- with that, maybe. Also, in many ways, the uh, the the familiar, or if you're a, or if you're a sorcerer, or you're a wizard, you're maybe your familiars are your eyes at this point. Yeah, like, I think, like, the diopsin, like, I, I remember, like, ran a game where, like, one of, like, like the cleric was blind. How about a venerable wizard who is on his last journey? Because he knows that he's starting to lose himself due to Alzheimer's and dementia. Or if you're a character that, you know, you, you're suffering from a debil- degenerative, dis- you're suffering from an incurable degenerative disease or curse, and like this could maybe, be... Like maybe the rogue is dying right. of cancer. Hey, you know, incurable is the same, asking for a challenge. Yes, well, well, when I say incurable, that unless it's very high, extremely high-level magic, so you're going to be going on the only thing that's going to be able to get you access to that kind of stuff. Maybe like yeah. a mystical form of cancer that is eating through your body, and you only have like a year left, and you're trying to just oh, or leave a legacy. Cancer. That actually sounds like a fun campaign when you put it in that perspective. Like a, a campaign of like suicidal companions who are going on like one final quest, maybe under the guise of like they're looking for cures, like there's some mystical fountain or a fucking wish. Yeah, the fountain. Like you could have the, again, the blind paladin who's just bitter that he can't serve the order anymore. The wizard who's losing his memories because his just mind is starting to fail. The rogue, the rogue who's suffering from uh, magical tuberculosis that, you know, he's going to die. Like he's a, like going... a, a, demo- a demonic or de- devil v- version of tuberculosis. Yeah. They have or a uh, min maxing thing, like they have absolutely no problem putting 110 percent in everything because they don't care if it kills them in the process. Yeah, I mean that's 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 an actually interesting thing if you want to base a campaign around disabled characters. That's that makes it interesting. It makes it interesting conflict. And I, I it's a bit it's a bit sad, but uh, er, earlier we had a slightly earlier recording where. Greg, uh, his, basically his audio just started uh, shitting out, but he came up with the idea of playing a, a scion that is paraplegic or quadriplegic who, rather than accept it with grace, is angry because of the injury that happened. And he uses his mind powers to kind of fulfill and try to indulge in that anger at the world for giving him what he has, which is not oh. much. Alternatively, for a character, you could play a character that tries to not come to terms with their disability, that they are in a fierce denial of their a fierce denial of their disability. Like if I ran the blind paladin, it's more along the lines of no, I have one more quest in me at least. Or and maybe over the course of the campaign, they learn to come to terms with it, or try to find it uh, unique uh, met, uh, ways of turning it into a strength for example which, a fighter who has uh, somebody 
or is a gish build who casts darkness. Yeah, yeah you know what? This ability is gay anyway, and you shouldn't use them. If you use them in the tabletop, you should be beaten. <laughs> but if you do <laughs> want to use it, again, Greg had connections, and he found a little blog about some disabilities that actually have consequences. It's Tumblr, unfortunately, but it does kind of do the disability character much more effectively. Because oh, yeah. The big thing about this that I dislike is... At points, the character isn't the person; it's the wheelchair. Yep. Yeah. yeah well, which is, like, which kind of defeats down. the purpose. It, it's the like wheelchair is the better character. You don't even need one anyway. <laughs> Just keep well, the wheelchair. That's what I'm gonna say that it's like, like it's like um, when you make a character, it's like, oh yeah, he's the black guy, or I'm the gay. That's literally all your character's been reduced to. Yeah, which is terrible. I mean, yeah. that's it is, really. I mean, the most that, physical sense. I mean, the if that's not ableism, character. what is? My defining trait is my wheelchair, and that's it. <laughs> my wheelchair has more of a backstory than I do. My wheelchair is more useful than I am. <laughs> and that's Both in real life and in game. So, usually that we have a... Well, actually, we just usually say whether or not we like the homebrew or not for homebrew hells. No. Honestly, uh, this this kind of reminds me of that '90s trend called like the super cripple, where like um they're they're crippled, but they you wouldn't tell because they have nothing. They, they everything they they do makes up for it. Sailor Moon was gonna have a cripple one in the states. That would have been great. <laughs> oh yeah, that's exactly what it is. Like when Sa Sailor Mercury in her like flying wheelchair. That's actually what I was <laughs> thinking of. Um. Either way, I I don't I I don't agree. I don't really think this is a good bit of homebrew just because. Well, yeah. The like, idea I... of a disabled character or one with problems is always one that's great, but. It's written by a person who refuses to accept it, and in fact, I think they have a bit of a fetish for it. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Flaws are intricate and good character design, but they shouldn't be the only draw card to your character. Yeah, like... Like, again, I'm going to use the Alzheimer's wizard. It's not that... It's not about the fact that he's just an old man that forgets. It's... When I was younger, I was the premier member of my order. But now there are days where I don't even know where I am, who I am at times. Yeah, but then he, like, eventually gets these, like, moments of clarity, like, through his long-term memory where he, like, remembers stuff. Like, and, and he doesn't even know why anymore he's on this journey. Alternatively, yeah. you could put, what if you play a cold and cold and killed five chickens? <laughs> <laughs> or, or what if you play a genuine amnesiac character and, you know, as this journey, they come to discover who themselves is. It's and they like, might not mm -hmm. like who they used yeah, to be. Or Do like, they? Like, you have a like, narcoleptic character. <laughs> or like a person with selective mutism that like, that like when they're in like an anxious or stressful situation, they just, you know, stop speaking. You have a diabetic warrior who has to eat sugar constantly or else he'll just fucking take a nap in the middle of the battle. All right, well, I'm okay, done with this. Now we're this. getting kind of shit posted. We, we gotta stop. We gotta stop below our head. Wait All a minute. Right. I think I'm getting clarity now. Holy shit! I think the room's coming back to normal again. And oh god, I can see it. Ah, my legs are broken. Ah, ah! <laughs> it looks like you'll need a combat wheelchair. <laughs> Uh, I think I think there may be some head injuries on mine because the room still looks a little bit different. Ah, well, let's just go to a hospital at some point, get these things fixed. And I, oh, hey, I think we can finally leave, although I don't know if we should because of the broken limbs. Oh, God, someone called the ambulance. Well, up next, uh, up next, who knows? All I do know is our medical bills are going to be ridiculous. I hate all of you. <laughs>